If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, all things have become new. I love that newness. I'm so glad that on this new day you are joining us. I'm Tom. I'm here with Angela and Amy. It's all new, guys, and we've got a, a guest coming up. Well, coming up on Hope Today, you're going to meet two young ladies who are on fire for the Lord. Anna had the chance to sit down with Elise and Zoe, who go to my church. I love them so much. And they share about the upcoming Pittsburgh Walk for Jesus and how the next generation is taking the gospel to the streets of Pittsburgh. Listen, we're hearing a lot about the next generation right now. There's a lot of concern, but there's also a lot of hope, Angela, the young generation. There is a group that is on fire for the Lord. So today, I believe that you're going to have hope for your kids, hope for your grandkids, hope for the schools, hope for the next generation. Yeah, it's beautiful because it has to go to the next generation and they're hungry, they're thirsty for God. They want the real thing. They don't want anything else. That They don't want their parents' faith, their grandparents' faith. And it's time, the Lord is showing us he's moving yeah. to give them their own. And they, these, these gals, they are dynamite. I mean, I love <laughs> them. I are. mean, to see them as teenagers really setting things up, not just living their own life, but wanting to affect the society around them. Well. Talking about affecting the society, we have a, a passing to mention to you today, Charles Stanley. Many of you know him from seeing him on Cornerstone with his program, In Touch. 90 years old, passed away uh, yesterday. He was the pastor of the First Baptist Atlanta for 50 years. Wow. He founded In Touch Ministries in 1977, and here's why he did it to get the truth of the gospel to as many people as possible. So he was gonna use television. Mm -hmm. He authored over 60 books. I know uh, Dave, our, our producer, mentioned uh, one that was so impactful in his life. And uh, you know, uh, somebody, some people may not know, he was a nature photographer, really like top quality, put out calendars. And in fact, Billy Graham uh, had one in his, in his room. You know, he had uh, one of his, his uh, nature photographs. But uh, you know, guys, uh, I, I just think about, uh, you know, Charles Stanley and, and people like him, one of those foundational people, especially in yes. Christian television, one of those people that made such a difference. In fact, Linda, our, our makeup artist here, she told me that when she was a young Christian, Charles Stanley was one of the reasons that, you know, she was able to get her foundations together, you know, get, because mm -hmm. that's what he did. Yeah. He yes. taught foundational things. Amy, what's your reaction to Charles you know, Stanley? I, I, he was an absolute statesman, and you can say that about a couple of handfuls of people. He was a man after God's own heart, a man of character, a man in, of integrity, of, a man of steadfastness, of longevity, of faithfulness, to pastor the same church for 49 years. I mean, all credit to him to author the books to really uh, one of the pioneers in Christian television. Right. I mean, we're sitting here today really standing on his shoulders. So we just say to, to the Stanley family, we're praying for you. We say to Charles up there, well done, good and faithful servant. And it's a great reminder, guys, that, you know, life is short. It's important that we walk with God, live for God, and our actions. One day we will stand before Jesus, Angela, and give yes. an account for every word and deed and book we've read and everything we said on television and wow. on and on. <laughs> Absolutely get the full measure of the reward, as Tom said earlier. Uh, what do you know of Charles Stanley? What, what like You know, he was someone that I looked to a lot and gleaned from his teachings and then even from his son, Andy. Yes. And so he's been really impactful in my own life. Um, and I'm just thankful for giants like this. Like these are the men who have gone before us, who, like you said, Tom, have laid the foundation and really from which we now launch from. Yeah, you know, I was I was home one day. I, we, we weren't going to church. I can't remember why. Don't don't judge me. Don't judge me out there. But I, I turned on TV and Charles Stanley was on, and I was I'm watching Charles Stanley. And didn't often do that. It just didn't have the opportunity. But I'm watching him. By the end, it was like the teaching was so good. He had like these little cards that he would send. I was like, I was like uh, calling up and ordering my cards. Or maybe I went online. I think I went online and ordered the uh, the cards because they were so foundational. I just want to say uh, quickly as well, another giant, George Verwer, founder of Operation Mobilization, one of the major uh, missionary ministries of the past 60 years, he passed away too. 
uh, George would come out wearing a globe, a jacket with the globe all over it, and, and just calling people to reach the world for mm -hmm. Christ. Some of these giants are passing away. Mm -hmm. It's up to me and you to fill that void and to be the people of God so that the world will know him. Wow. Well, from the giants to the next generation, stay tuned because when we return in 60 seconds, you're going to see how the next generation is making an impact for the move of God. We'll be right back. Cornerstone Television has believed in the power of prayer since its inception 44 years ago. We invest heavily in our prayer line to provide you with 24-7 personal prayer, knowing it brings breakthrough, healing, and wisdom. Last year alone, we received over 65,000 prayer calls. And if you have partnered with us, thank you so very much. And when you give this month, I am so excited to share with you my new book, Praying on Another Level. It's a 30-day journal to take your prayer life to a new dimension in God. You see, prayer is how we separate good ideas from God ideas. It's how we unlock the door to revelation, and it's where we get our strength to build up our spirit man to hear from God throughout our day. All that and so much more. So call us now at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org forward slash donate to request your copy. It is time to take your prayer life to another level. I'm so excited to have back with us two young women who are changing our city for Christ. Elise Whitten and Zoe Henry, along with a whole team of young people, are founders of the Pittsburgh Walk for Jesus, which launched just last year. And they're doing the walk again on Sunday, April 30th. So mark your calendar. They'll be there with even more momentum, experience, and excitement. Elise and Zoe, join us today to share their heart, what they believe God is doing in their generation, and their mission for the Pittsburgh Walk for Jesus. But before I dig into my conversation with them, take a look at this short video about the walk. to see how God moved at your very first walk for yes. pit walk for yes. Jesus. So Elise, Zoe, so glad to have you back with us. And since some of our CTV and family hasn't had a chance to meet you, can you each just take a little bit to share about yourself and what God's been doing in your life in this past year? Yeah, so currently I'm a freshman at Liberty University. Um, underneath their school of divinity, just learning so much about God's word. And I've just been, been so blessed to be part of different opportunities, even while away at school, different evangelism teams, and just different opportunities to further the kingdom of God yes. while even being away. But honestly, the whole time when I've been away at school, the Lord has continually reminded me how much a heart he has given me for the city of Pittsburgh. Yes. And really just to see the youth and young adults marked for God and for his kingdom. So I'm really excited to join in with the Lord and uh, not just globally, but so more locally as well. It's awesome. It's so neat to see how yeah. the Lord just continues to grow you, grow your leadership and provide so many opportunities for you. Yes. And Zoe, how about you? Yeah, well, I'm currently in high school, but the Lord has opened a lot of doors for me just to see the behind the scenes of ministry and what ministry looks like. Right now, currently in this year, he's really been showing me that ministry is so much more than just being in a church, but it actually is your everyday life. It's actually the little decisions that you make that really is ministry. Um, you could be doing ministry in the middle of shop and save. Like, it's really about your heart posture with the Lord. And I've just, it's a blessing just to see what, it, what ministry really is. Right. Oh, that's such a good point too because yeah. truly each one of us if we are believers we're mm -hmm. called exactly. to a certain yeah. kind of ministry and it's yeah. 
usually it's not in the church. Mm -hmm. There's all different ways God yeah. wants to use us right where we are. So, okay, this Pittsburgh Walk for Jesus, yes. <laughs> for somebody who has never heard about it, share what the vision was, like why did you decide to do this and what your hope is for it? It coming this year. Yeah, honestly, so October 2021, I just really felt the Lord to really challenge me to see our city so differently. That was a year mm -hmm. after so much political tension and so many different riot, riots and just so many different things that were going on. And I just remember just like, God, like yeah. we can do something in our city. We can use this generation for him. And so that was in October 2021. And just mm -hmm. through a different series of connections and previously meeting some other people like Zoe, I just yeah. assimilated our team uh, that following winter, excuse me, winter of 2021. And then we had our first event, our first gathering on April 23rd yeah. of 2022. And honestly, yeah. it's so exciting. <laughs> Um, for those of you who don't know exactly what it is, it's honestly focused on the youth and young adults, this next generation that's up and rising. And really our entire aim is just really to just come alongside what the Lord's already doing. And so the event consists of prayer and worship. And then we actually hit the streets of Pittsburgh and actually walk. And the entire time, it's just so beautiful for the church to come together and really mm -hmm. lift up and exalt the name of Christ. Yeah. yeah. And I love how you said you're just joining what God is exactly. already doing because he He's asking us to partner with him. And we've seen so yeah. much revival, especially coming out of mm -hmm. the younger generation. Yeah. And so Zoe, what caused you to want to be a part of this movement? Revival, like that's yeah. all, like really, like we talk about revival all the time in my church personally, we're such a big revival church. And a lot of times I think as a congregation, we can just sit on the side and watch it happen and not be a part of it. Yeah. So I think it's so vital and important to be the revival because revival starts with us and starts with you. And God is moving all over. He's moving in college campuses. He's moving everywhere. So why not us, right? right. Like, so I just think revival is one of the reasons why I just wanted to come alongside with Elise and be a part of this leadership team. Right. And so your team overall, about how many people, how many young people are involved with it? Yeah, so there's seven of us young people. Uh, yeah. Some like high school and Zoe, and uh -huh. then we have some other members who are just freshmen in college. And then we also, I think it's so important that I mention that Pittsburgh Walk for Jesus, as much as it's focused on youth and young adults, we definitely want those who are more mature yes. in the faith and those who have walked longer with Christ to really come alongside mm -hmm. us. There's so much practical wisdom and guidance that yes. they can give us. So we definitely welcome those of any age to really come alongside us. Yeah, I mean, it's so beautiful when the generations yeah. run together, this exactly. race of faith. Okay, so we have a lot of adults watching today. Yes. What are some of the different ways that they can rally around you? Oh, there is a bunch. So we have an outreach team and so like we have an outreach, sorry, I'm so sorry. We have an outreach team and with the outreach team, we go along the streets of Pittsburgh and we just pass out stuff to people or give prayer to people or spread the gospel. And then we have a production team and the production team um, it helps with the worship, it helps with the photography, just all that stuff. And, and then another way is you guys can help us with our funds and help give. We have that online at Pittsburgh Walk for Jesus or our Instagram page, which is the same thing. And yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about what was it like last year? Yeah, last year honestly blew our minds. Yeah. Honestly, it's just so cool. You know, we can only do so much, but ultimately just letting the spirit have its way. And um, last year we had a bigger, you know, it's yeah. never about the numbers, but it's so cool to see that people were responsive. And just like what Zoe was alluding to earlier, just really wanting to participate. You know, the Bible talks so much about the Great Commission and oftentimes we think about that globally, but really mm -hmm. just for the church to participate what the Lord is doing, even in our city, it was yeah. so powerful to witness and just so many youth or their lives were changed. I remember even one of our current members who are now on our leadership team, she attended the walk from like hearing about it from her friend and now she's on our leadership team, just seeing how people's faith life was really mm -hmm. pushed to really participate in what the Lord was doing. Yeah, that's awesome. And so um, your mission verse comes from the book of Luke. Can you share a little bit about that verse and what it means to you? Yeah, so it comes from Luke 17, or chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. And the entire scope of the verse is talking about, uh, Jesus talks about how the kingdom of God is not particularly here, it's not particularly there, 
but it's in your midst, or some other translations say it's within you. And it's just so powerful, especially as Zoe and we've all been alluding to, just how powerful it is to see what the Lord is doing in college campuses and different areas around the world. And it's not just like revival is just there, but it's really within us all. Mm -hmm. Revival is not just a particular day, it's an everyday lifestyle that the Lord has called us to. Right. And so that is why the verse is the verse that we've chosen for yeah. Pittsburgh Walk for Jesus. Yeah, spoken so well. All right, so we have just a little bit of time left and I know you have such a heart for your mm -hmm. generation and the hard things that so many are dealing with, with anxiety, depression, suicide, and also just the purpose and calling yeah. that God has put on their lives. So would, would each of you be able to just take like 30 seconds or so and just offer up a prayer for our young people? Yeah, do you want me to? Okay. Father, we just pray over the people and the young people watching, and we pray that you would just enlight a fire in them to spread the gospel, but also I pray that the broken would be healed, God. I pray that the blind would see, Father. I pray that the suicidal would no longer be suicidal in the name of Jesus, but I just pray that you would help them and heal their hearts, Father. All they really want is you, Jesus, and sometimes we don't recognize that fully. So I pray just healing and I cover them with blessing, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. And Lord, I thank you for the work that you're doing amongst this generation, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your word that says that you are faithful to complete what you have started, Lord. So I just call back forth the prodigals, Father, and this generation to return to you. Your word says that uh, when you train up a child, he should not depart from the ways of you, Lord. And I just call forth just a back of remembrance to your people, Lord, in this generation, and even those who are older in the faith, Father. I just thank you, Lord, that you would continue to usher in your people for such a time as this. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ladies, you are such a light, such Thanks. an inspiration. And we always love when you're here with us on Thank Hope you. Today. Yes. But one last time, the date and time of the event. Yes, so it is April 30th, it's at 2 p.m. Okay. And it is, I totally forget the address. Yeah, it's at the Great Lawn. Okay. Yeah, Great Lawn right on the North heart of Shore. The, or North Shore. Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. And where can they find more information? Yeah, if you guys head to our website, which is triple w dot pw4j.com. There you can find all the different other ways that you can partner alongside us, more of an extensive yes. of, list of volunteer teams and even how you can tell your congregations about this year's event. Yeah, awesome. Yes. Oh, we can get our congregations all yes, involved yes. and spread the word. All right, folks, well, you heard it. The Pittsburgh Walk for Jesus is on April 30th at 2 p.m. And Oh, how awesome it would be for all of us to go down there, rally around this young generation that is doing awesome things for the Lord and just see our generations run together. So again, Elise, Zoe, thank, thank you so yes, much. Thank you. And we'll be back with more right after this. Hey, Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. I hope that you were as encouraged and infused with hope as I was listening to Elise and Zoe. And just to me, guys, it's like, oh, what a relief. The next generation, they've got it. And what a responsibility we have as believers to pass on our faith to the next generation. It's from Dr. Stanley to the son 
to the children, to the children's children. And that is how the gospel message keeps going and the fires of revival, Tom, keep burning. Well, there's no age on where the Holy Spirit anoints and appoints. Uh, Paul told Timothy, don't let anyone look down on your youthfulness. And we shouldn't either. Those are young women there that are standing and walking mm -hmm. for Jesus and making a difference in their world. That's a, that's a lesson to us all, Angela, that, that we would not just say, well, after I do this, after I graduate high school, after I go to college, after I get started in my job, then I'll serve the Lord better. No, it's right now, at this moment, where you're at, in the supermarket, wherever, yeah, making a difference for Jesus. <laughs> That's right. You know, I think we often look at this generation and we feel sorry or we feel sad or we're confused and perplexed thinking maybe God's not searching after them as hard as he searched after us. But that's far from the truth. I love how Isaiah says of his government and of his peace, it is always increasing. It is never decreasing. Even when we look among the world and we might see heartache and we might see things that just confuse us, his government is increasing and we can see it in this next generation. It's beautiful because if you're sitting here today and maybe you're heavy laden with burdens, Maybe you are a lot like the generation that we're speaking of, riddled with anxiety, struck by depression, feeling heavy. Jesus says that lest a man be born again, he cannot receive eternal life. And that eternal life begins now, the moment that you receive him. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the one who brings every good and perfect gift to you. And he desires and designed you to carry into life and life abundant. So today, where are you? Where is your heart? Do you feel heavy and sorrowful? Do you feel like there's chaos all around you? He wants to speak peace, be still. But it requires one thing of you. It requires that you say, yes, Jesus. I want you in this boat of life with me. I want to receive your free gift of salvation. I recognize the wreck that my life is, the mess that I'm in, and I want you, the fixer, the restorer, to come and restore me. That is a simple prayer. He says you acknowledge, you believe him and confess him, and he makes you new. I don't know about you, but I know for me, when I made that decision, I recognized a need for newness. I recognized I wanted something, everything in my life to change, and he did just that. As soon as I said yes, he came in, picked up all my broken pieces, put me together, and breathed new life in me. And you know what's powerful when you say yes? It's not just this like exchange of eternal glory of, oh, I get to go to heaven. But right there, right then, he literally begins to transform your mind. I had a sweet friend who just recently gave her life to Jesus, and she made two statements to me. She said, Ange, it is so wild because my mind actually has space in it now. Are you clogged up with thoughts that consume you and keep you bogged down in darkness? He wants to make space for his love to be spoken into you. The second she said, she said, Ange, it is wild. Literally, colors look different to me. She said, it was like I was wearing sunglasses or something. I can't explain it. You guys, it was the most miraculous thing to hear that literally Jesus' love came in and it changed the lens through which she sees the world. The world started to look a whole lot brighter to her. Oh, Jesus has this for you too. He has spaces for you to see new and bright, glorious colors and to see goodness in the land of the living here and now and in the one to come. If you say, yes, Ange, I want this. I want this Jesus that you speak of. I want this new life. I want to experience peace in my heart and in my mind. We have prayer partners who are standing by to pray with you. If you just dial that number right there at the bottom of your screen, they will link their heart with yours. They will hear your story and they will give you the hope of Christ that is found through believing and confessing. Today, today might just be the beginning of a new day and a new life for you. I know Amy and Tom, we all have made that decision and it has forever changed us. There's no greater gift that you can experience than life itself. 
You're so right. My, my father-in-law, after he got born again, he walked out and he, get, he said, the trees are greener than I've ever seen. The sky is bluer. There is nothing like when Jesus shows up in your life. Jesus changes everything. You know, I was reading the story of Zacchaeus this morning, you know, and he was just curious. It says he was a short, wealthy man. <laughs> So maybe you're a short, wealthy man today or woman, and you're just curious about Jesus. You're like, I just want to see what he's doing, what he's all about. He climbs up in a tree. And listen, I, I like short people because I am one of them. But Jesus walks up and says, Zacchaeus, today salvation has come into your home. Yes. Wow. What about you today? Like, yes. don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait another week. Don't wait. You're curious. Listen, I'm telling you, his love is real. His love changes everything. And today is your day. Give us a call at 888-665-4483 and make the decision to follow Christ. You know, that, that whole thing about seeing the trees is brighter green and the sky is brighter. It says in the Bible that a veil lies over their heart, but when the veil is removed, so now we see who we are meant to be. We see the world as, as we were meant to see it. We understand things differently. It is a regeneration of the Holy Spirit that changes everything. And notice how it's the same for every generation. Charles Stanley preached the same gospel that these young ladies are preaching. The same story. I've read some old books from a thousand years ago, some saints of God. They're having the same struggles we have. And the same gospel saves them, saved them then, saves us now. Everybody on this, this little set here, we've all come to that place. We all realized we couldn't do things on our own. We all realized that we had broken God's laws and we needed a savior. And we, we came to the foot of the cross and said, Lord, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. And when he did that, all of a sudden, the veil's taken off our hearts. We understand why we live yes. and wh what our life is for. And when you do that, yes. you may see the trees as greener and the sky as bluer, but one thing you'll see for sure, you'll see the Lord Jesus Christ in all his glory in your life, the Holy Spirit empowering you. Open up to him today. Your life will never be the same. Have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, learn about the life of John Newton and the surprising story behind Amazing Grace. Authors Bruce Hindmarsh and Craig Borlas reveal the shocking true story about the author of the song that has touched the lives of millions. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.